just about chalk up another $15 billion roughly to the American taxpayers. U.S. automakers could be getting their bailout loan and very soon. Now, despite the tongue lashing the big three CEOs got on Capitol Hill, the White House says government rescue is likely. Here's my question. Is any of this money going to change anything? Joining me now to talk about this, Lisa Lair, reporter from Politico at the hearings last week. Also with us, radio talk show host Chris Markowski from Watchdog on WallStreet.com. All right, Lisa, let's start with you. Give us the latest. Are we really close? Could it happen by the end of the day? Well, Democrats will have circulated something, um, and it's likely to happen in the next couple days. It could happen as soon as today, but uh, this is Congress, so you never know. Okay. Uh, give us the particulars of the plan, Lisa, as you know it. I mean, we're talking, is it $15 billion or is it between like 14 to $17 billion? It's basically emergency loan money that will be available December 15th. We start there. Is that right? That's exactly right. This is just to get these automakers through. Basically, they're punting down the line to the Obama administration. This is just to get them through in the short term. Okay. It's half of what they requested last week when they came forward with their plans. They're asking for $34 billion. They're getting about $15 billion. Okay. Then President Bush uh, likely to name an overseer of all this? Is that one person or a board? Do we know that? Uh, well, the Democrats originally wanted a seven-person board. Uh, they're likely to get one person who's, the name I keep hearing is Kenneth Feinberg, who's someone who administrated the, he's best known for administrating the September 11th Victims Compensation Fund. So he doled out about seven billion to, uh, I think, over 5,000 victims of the September 11th, uh, families of the September 11th attacks. Okay. Chris Markowski, you like what you're hearing so far? Well, I'm, I'm not too thrilled with the entire thing. It sounds like a stay of execution as far as I'm concerned because I just don't understand the viability. I, I don't know if Lisa knows the answer to this. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this money, if I'm not mistaken, was already allocated last summer as a part of the energy bill, and they're just pushing that forward. And actually, the last I checked as well is the White House is not, not exactly thrilled with the plan that Congress has sent up to him. Okay. Let's, um, Chris, I know you don't like it, but uh, President-elect Obama, basically he's saying, we, we got to save them, right? Let, let's listen to him. This is a president-elect Barack Obama and meet the press yesterday. I think that the big three U.S. automakers have made repeated strategic mistakes. But what I've also said is, is that the auto industry is the backbone of American manufacturing. Uh, it is a huge employer across many states. Millions of people directly or indirectly uh, are reliant on that industry and so I don't think it's an option to simply allow it to collapse. Chris, how do you argue that? What, well, what? I, I don't think going into Chapter 11 bankruptcy is allowing the auto industry to collapse. I think it's going to allow it to reorganize and push the start button. If the shareholder equity has to be wiped out in this situation, then it has to be wiped out and we need to move forward to build a viable auto industry here in the United States. Allowing these companies to do business as usual, it's just not, not going to work. I don't care how much money you throw at them, eventually they're going to run out. Okay. All right, we'll continue our conversation about an auto bailout loan. Uh, th this deal could take place by the end of the day. Uh, 14 to $17 billion could be made available by December 15th. We introduce our guest, Chris Markowski from WatchdogOnWallStreet.com. Also with us, Lisa Lair, reporter from uh, Politico. Let's get to some calls. Let's start with Chris in Virginia. Chris, what's your uh, comment or question here? Well, it, it seems to me that Wall Street execs used the same type of business model as Detroit's Big Three did, except they were using mortgages. How come these execs still have their job, and are they still using their corporate jets? Hey, uh, Lisa, that's a great question. Why, why is Washington being so tough on the auto industry, and it didn't seem they were being as tough on folks from Wall Street? Well, it's exactly because of that that disparity there that they have they feel they have to be tougher on the automakers because they weren't as tough on Wall Street, and that's they they feel that they got burned by that. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't like this bailout. They don't like this idea that we keep bailing out these companies. So now they have, they're going to give them the money, but they're going to make them really you know run for it. Hey, Chris, do you think uh, the CEO is going to keep their jobs? Um, I think when all said and done, I think it's probably some of them there where they're calling for Rick Wagner's head. But I wanted to comment on what Chris said in Virginia. Yeah, the real, the reason why, the reason why that you're not seeing them come down hard on the CEOs down in, in downtown New York on Wall Street is because they're buddies. They went to the same schools together. They golf together. They travel on each other's planes, and they get most of their political contributions from Wall Street. So that's why we never see that cleaned up. Gotcha. All right, let's get to another call. Noreen in Florida. Noreen, go ahead. Hi, Mike. Hey. I wish you a Merry Christmas and tell you how much it upsets me that these people are putting up their distasteful signs. Well, we'll get to, yeah, we'll get to that sign yeah. uh, that, that in just a minute. What do you think of the auto bailout, Noreen? You got... It's a Band-Aid where a tourniquet is needed. Wow. Short I mean, 
succinct. I mean, what can you say? Yeah, they're, no, they're hemorrhaging up there. You're right. Noreen, by the way, Merry Christmas to you, Noreen. Uh, Chris, how long is fifteen billion going to last? <laughs> I, I, from well, from their their original uh, what they originally asked for, they said it'll probably last about a month, month and a half. Then they're going to be back again. I mean, when are we going to say enough is enough? I don't see the auto industry turning around anytime soon. I don't see everybody saying, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to go out and get a car or two or three or four to solve the problem." It's just not going to work. They're going to have gotcha. to come back in March. Hey, Lisa, uh, uh, to that point, they're going to have to come back with a detailed plan, right? And this car czar, whoever it is is going to either approve or deny or tweak, right? That's exactly right. And if the plan isn't detailed enough, if they don't follow all the conditions that are put in by Congress, such as limiting executive pay, things like that, they can have to, part of the bill, so the Democrats' proposal at least, says that they might have to return the money in March. So there's going to be a lot of scrutiny. And it's exactly because of what, you know, the fact that the earlier caller pointed out. The lack of scrutiny on the $700 billion Wall Street gotcha. bailout has forced Congress okay. politically to give a lot of scrutiny this right. time around. Lisa and Chris, we appreciate it. More coming up. Stay with us.